Hey, I'm Konstantin Batygin from Caltech, and I'm here today to tell you a little bit about uh, research that I've been uh, very excited about over the last couple of years, namely the proposal that the solar system hosts an additional massive planet in its distant realms. Dating back to about uh, two, three years ago, it has become clear that patterns are emerge in the distant solar system, namely if you go out and focus on the longest period orbits in the Kuiper belt, then you note that all of them kind of fo form this, this cluster where they all kind of lie in the same plane and they all swing out in the same direction. A couple years ago, I published a paper with, along with my homie, Mike Brown, uh, demonstrating that this cluster of long period orbits can be maintained and reproduced beautifully by the gravitational influence of a distant planet which orbits the Sun on a very long period orbit, about 20,000 years, and is, and is quite eccentric. Now, even back then, we understood very well that you can do computer experiments and you can demonstrate that, that the whole thing works out quite nicely, but embarrassingly, we didn't really know why. In a recent paper uh, that was published just a couple weeks ago, we explain the physical processes that are at play. As it turns out, the reason that this distant cluster of Kuiper Belt objects that we observe remains stable is because all of these objects hop between what are called mean motion resonances with Planet 9. So it's this um, almost clockwork-like interaction between the gravitational influence of the planet and the Kuiper Belt objects that it uh, that it governs. At the same time, the, the shape of this pattern, the shape of this cluster, is controlled by a somewhat different mechanism, uh, namely the secular, the orbit averaged component of Planet Nine's gravitational influence. That is, uh, you, to leading order, you can think of the gravity that Planet Nine exerts upon this distant belt of bodies as coming from, from a massive ellipse. So it's as if you could take the planet itself, break it up, and smear its mass along its orbit and then compute the gravitational influence of such an ellipse. So with this new understanding, the exciting thing is we can zoom in a little bit better on what the true parameters of Planet Nine are, and we can give qualitative context to the computer experiments that we have performed and are continuing to uh, execute. Now I know many of you I'm sure are wondering what is the status of, uh, of Planet Nine? What is, what is the observational evidence? Is it, is it there? And uh, to this end I spent five nights at the telescope with Mike Brown uh, together a couple months ago and we, uh, we covered a good patch of the sky. Frustratingly we don't know if we found Planet Nine in that data set yet. That data set is still being processed. Um, we're going back to the telescope again in a couple of weeks and we'll be doing more observations and uh, I will be sure to let you know if we find it. Thanks for watching this Cool Worlds video and if you have any questions, concerns, ideas about Planet Nine or anything else, make sure to leave a comment in the comment section below uh, or ping me on Twitter and I'll try and get back to you.